And welcome back to Jeff Koenange live at the Intercontinental Hotel here with two greats, two professors, same family. Imagine that. So unfair. But that's the way it is. Professor Goge Wathiong, distinguished professor of English and comparative studies, something like that at University of California, Irvine. Yeah, smart guy. And his son, professor of English at Cornell University. Amazing, incredible stories. Between them, they've written 50 books. Count them, 50. Some of us are still trying to get over one. My yeah. goodness. But there's many more to come. You think so? I mean, yeah, you of, think course, so? of course. Uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, uh, no, I think there's one more to come. And I like when you combine his 40 to my, his 40 <laughs> to my, you know, <laughs> it's, it's a good number, right? Yeah, between them, half, yeah. 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 Right, right, and then yeah. the other kids, yeah. that's like 100. <laughs> yeah. You guys, you own it. <laughs> Yeah. Thanks to East African Educational Publishers, got to mention them. Yeah. And by the way, Professor Goge Wathiongo will be having a public lecture at the University of Nairobi on the 11th of June, time TBD. And on the 13th, textbook center, Sarit, he'll be signing books, all his books. So show up. June 13th, textbook, and June 11th, public lecture. Mukoma, mm -hmm. you have something you're working on at Cornell University. Go on. Yeah, you know, and I, I want to say first, it, it was inspired by the, the knowledge that things fall apart has been translated into over 50, 60 world languages, uh, and yet it has never been translated into Igbo, right? So it has never been translated into his, into his, own, um, into his own language, yes. which I'm also guilty of. Nairobi has been translated into, okay, one language, but still doesn't exist in Kikuyu. Are you going to? I'm, I'm hoping to. I, 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 I've reached a crisis point with that. But one of the things I'm, I, I'm doing is uh, co-founding the Mabati Cornell Prize, the, 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 the Cornell, uh, the Mabati Cornell Kiswahili Prize for African Writing, um, with the idea of promoting African writing in African languages, uh, but specifically <coughs> Kiswahili writing. And just with, just to talk about it briefly, the prize is fifteen thousand for the winner. U.S. Uh, U.S. Oh, yeah, nice. yeah, um, and then get trans get, get get published by South African educational publishers. And then on top of that, get translated into English, and the poetry, the translated poetry, will be published by the Africa Poetry Fund. So, so that's what we're trying to do. So, if people are interested in finding more about the prize, just look for Mabati Cornell of Kiswahili. That, that you Google that. Yeah. But I want to say one more thing about the importance of Mabati being involved, which is this: that it shows African philanthropy can be at the forefront of. Uh, of regenerating African culture. So we need more African philanthropists instead <coughs> of always looking out uh, to the West and the NGOs. Yeah. And, this, yeah. and this is sponsored by Mabati Rolling Bills? Yeah, yeah. Chandari yeah, and company? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Manu, yeah. yeah. Yeah, with the help of Cornell. Right. So, so they're equal partner. Okay. Yes. Uh, can anybody enter? Anybody can enter. You know, so anybody writing in Kiswahili can enter. You just need, uh, you know, 60 pages of poetry and uh, about 50,000 words of fiction. But, but if there are any questions, you know, mm. we have a bilingual website. Uh, but also, they can, they can email me at mukomagoge at cornell.edu, and so on and so forth. But the information is online. Mukomagoge at, at cornell.edu. Cornell cornell yeah. Gotcha. I'm sure a lot of them will, uh, will get involved. So, only in Swahili? Only in Swahili. Yeah. For now, hopefully this will become, because we're setting up the structures, hopefully this will become an example for, yeah. other, for other languages. Prof. You want to talk about this? I'm not giving you this blanket. Somebody uh, gave it to you oh, earlier yes. today. <laughs> A I, group of lovely I, young ladies. I, I was at my old school yes. today, Alliance High School. Yes. And we were there to help our publishers launch all the five books, yeah. correct? Yeah, well, Inclu the five, yeah. including yeah. in the House of the Interpreter. Yeah. In the House of the Interpreter. Yeah. So we are all there. Mm -hmm. We, five writers or five rivals, from the same family, okay? Mm. Well, yes. Yeah? Yeah. And this particular book in the House of the Interpreter refers to Alliance High School. Because the first principal of Alliance High School used to compare Alliance High School to the interpreter's house. Give us his name. In, Give us his name. Uh, Carrie Francis. There you go. In Pilgrim's Progress where Christian, in wandering through his wanderings on this earth, mm -hmm. he comes to a house of the interpreter where the dust of his sins or whatever are uh, washed away. Carl Francis used to compare Alliance High School to the house of the interpreter. Mm -hmm. That's why I call my memoir 
in the house of the interpreter. And this is a follow through from the one uh, called uh, Dreams in a Time of War, right? Yes. Yeah, which is not here, war, but it's, yeah. it's, it's available yeah, and you will be signing it at some point. But the amazing Go thing on. which happened today, mm -hmm. we are there with my son, my son, right, with a family of writers. Mm -hmm. And they have brought schools from as far away as Machakos, where else? Where's your the farthest? Nakuru. Mm -hmm. Nakuru. Schools have come there. The schools around, you know, Alliance School, Nairobi, Karai, they were there. It was really, I was very, very, very touched, mm. you know. Mm. Uh, but before the ceremony st uh, started, uh, the ladies from Alliance Girls, Girls. Mm. High School, mm -hmm. where, by the way, Michelle Moore is a product of that high school, there as well go. as later, there you go. the... Uh, as a headmaster yeah. or a headmistress of that particular school. Mm -hmm. In Nui, and by the way, we call them Acrosians, uh, and they call <laughs> the boys Acrosians, okay? <laughs> right. Did you go to Alliance? No, no and, and there was no again your high school. I mean, you know. Oh, yeah. But my grandson, <laughs> called Gogi, is at Alliance High School. Oh, well, so yeah. the whole thing was from Gogi to Gogi. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, nice but time. anyway, yes, be yeah. the beginning of that, they gave me this. Mm. And I was very touched. I don't know that I can yeah, yeah. wear it. Go ahead, go ahead, wear it. Really? You know, I don't know how to wear it properly. Okay. But. Well, do you need some help? Uh, yeah. For time <laughs> being. Because I don't think you're supposed to wrap <gasps> it on your head. <laughs> prop the show, oh. the show is only an hour oh, long. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Okay, <laughs> now, okay, now. Uh -huh. Never mind. The reason I really appreciate it, first of all, they tied uh, under my uh, armpit here and over my shoulder, and they reminded me of the days before I went to school, mm. we used to only have a calico sheet as the only clothes that we had, okay? Mm. So for me, this brought really very important memories, you yeah. know? Huh? Yeah. But of course, also being a cloth which is made in Kenya with Kenyan colors and so on, that makes me even happier. So that's why I'll be, even when I, when I give formal lectures in America, <laughs> Occasionally, I'll be wearing this, okay? But, but you know what they gave me? They gave me a pair of jeans. <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't. No, yeah. no, they did not. I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, I want to come to... Hold on, hold on, hold okay. on. i got to read okay. some okay. tweets because okay. this is a live show. Oh, okay. uh, right. Be interactive. So, uh, Jabbar Rambanya says, For a 77-year-old, I think Gogi Wadiongo has kept himself fantastically well. Oh, thank you. Yeah. They Bill know. Collins Jr. says, African philanthropy can power African culture. We need more of that, right? I and you know, we have, we have uh, organizations like Equity. Mm. Equity is doing amazing things yeah. with something called Wings uh, to Fly. Mm. I don't know if yeah. you've heard of that. Uh, yeah. no, no, They're no, promoting yeah. the poor of the poor, taking them all okay. the way to uh, Ivy yeah, League, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Ivy League uh, University, so doing fantastically well. Mm. Mm. Cynthia Nyongesa says, the river between was my favorite set book in high school. Thank you. Unbelievable. And then Big Bad Wolf says, that's a truly <laughs> gifted family of authors. Thank you. Thank you. Right? You, we can't really you are the next generation. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mukama, you're the next generation. You're, you're what? You're 44 years old. Yeah, yeah. Younger than I am with like, you know, half a dozen books. This is unfair, but yeah. you know, let's move on. Mm. There are young people looking at you right now, Mukama, yeah. young Kenyans who want to be like you all, who want to write that first book. Yeah. Can't. It's writer's block. Mm. Mm -hmm. Not they don't have the ability. They yeah. they, they they get you know roadblocks and everything. Mm -hmm. What do you tell them, Mukoma? That first book they want mm -hmm. out there. What do you tell them? Well, the the only thing I would say is you really have to sit down and persevere. You know, there's no there, there's no easy book. I mean, okay, some books are much easier to write, but there's no easy writing. So, persevere, sit down and write and write and write. Uh, but also read a lot. You cannot you cannot be a writer who doesn't read. It would be like an engineer who doesn't you know who, who wants to fix a car without learning the theory. So I I would say. Reading is the theory, writing is the practice. Wonderful. Uh -huh. And for a 77-year-old who's still writing, and look, your, your latest yeah. is called Ruebo Roa Joki. Oh, yes. This is my latest. Song of the Bees. And I'm very proud of this book. And I'll tell you why. And I'm hoping, I don't know if Jane is here. Yeah, she's here. I hope she'll mm -hmm. have the book translated mm -hmm. into as many African languages as mm -hmm. possible. Mm -hmm. Because essentially this, all this fiction, it talks about the loss of the artisan class in Africa. Mm -hmm. Because the 
as Walter Rodney says in his book, How Europe and Developed Africa, the biggest blow that Europe struck at Africa was the destruction of its artisan class. The ones who make work with the iron, make, you know, sort of pangas, uh, make axes, make spears, make whatever. Mm -hmm. That who was destroyed. So the culture of making things, yes. the culture of making things was really, uh, shall we say, almost destroyed. Mm -hmm. And you can see the effect of this. Some years ago, let me can you tell you this story. I want to tell you a little story. Okay. Some years ago, here... Your dad tells lots of stories, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. Uh, he does, In this yeah. country, somebody, a bicycle repairer made an aeroplane. Yeah. Hmm. What was his name? Was it Gashaba? Gashaba. 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 He made an aeroplane from the backyard of his bicycle repair. He made it fly. Well, I don't know if it's a mile or mm. but he mm. made it fly. Yeah. Made, he called it Kenya One. Mm. And he was piloting it. What was the reaction of some of the most educated minds in this country? Shutting him in down. The Attorney General at the time, Charles George, actually a graduate of Hotel, a, a graduate of uh, Grace Inn, the one of the most highly edu accomplished educationally, mm. did not think that Kenya can produce anything like that because the best aeroplanes were made in Europe. But a person who had not even gone to high school had faith enough in Kenya and the ability of Kenyans as to create this aeroplane. We stopped him from uh, further attempts. Yeah. We laughed at him. We mocked him. Today in America, if any child shows any kind of talent, they have what they, what they call America has talent. Mm. Such a talent is taken, is nurtured, is developed, and so on. But we instead, we laughed at him. Yeah. We mocked at him. Oh. We passed a law preventing him from flying, of attempting to fly. So the best mind of Kenya, one of the best minds, <laughs> could only think only Europe could produce good aeroplane. Yeah. But even the Europeans started with with nothing. With nothing. The Wright brothers. Yeah. They laughed yeah. at the Wright brothers. Exactly. Remember? Yeah. When they started exactly. off. Okay, real quick. Joseph Mwinzi says the Gugges are family of genius. We know that already. Okay. Josh Mwajasi says, I bet Goye Wadiongo speaks his mother tongue with his children while in the US. Do you? Yes. Eh? Yeah. 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 And I'm also doing the same Nguo. thing with my four year old. Are you really? Nguo. Yeah. Nguo. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even yeah. Mombi with a twang? Huh? Yeah. She speaks the language? Yeah. Maria, Ma oh, you speak a Koyo. And his, uh, my, or my, my grandchildren, who yeah, yeah. were born in the U.S., yeah. you know, they are speaking, they speak to them in okay. Koyo all the time. Captain uh -huh. is asking, uh -huh. Goge, conservative or progressive? Question mark. My, my whole, if you look at my aunt, I really believe in people power. By this I mean, if you really want Kenya to go forward, we must have faith in Kenyan people. We must, mm. you know, the middle class is not always the engineer progress. Mm -hmm. You know, the ordinary Kenyan people, whether he's from Western Kenya, mm -hmm. from the coast, from Central, we must, whatever we have, whatever we do, this mm -hmm. the powerhouse of the power base of our struggle for independence, right? Yeah. And if we could really tap into the skills, into the imagination of ordinary Kenyans and with the middle class, instead of hiding in English language, connected ourselves to that, then we can bring what we have learned in Harvard, in Yale, and other places, and to complement what the <laughs> okay, people are doing. Okay, let me ask you this, right. uh, because this is for the younger generation, and we've learned to hate each other a lot, especially on the yeah. internet. Right. On social media, we hate each other as Kenyans mm. because of negative ethnicity. Mm. What do you think of this? Your dad is promoting, mm. has no apologies, mm. for talking in his language, for writing in his language. What about your generation? Well, I, 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 th I think my generation needs to to, 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 to to place the questions where they should be, right? And I think the gap between the wealth and poor, to me, matters a lot. So one of the questions I ask myself is, you know, and I, and I want to be careful here, but say Forbes lists the Uhuru Kenyatta family as owning half a million acres, right? Um, now, I'm not going to say, why would I, as a Kikuyu, without land, 
vote for somebody who has half a million acres. That's working against my interest because there is no way that person with 500 million acres will say, oh, you voted for me, take an acre, right? So I'd rather place the questions there. But in terms of language, we also have to pay attention to that. And I'm, I'm also part of the problem. I'm also part of the problem because most of my work is in English. But I do believe we can work, we can work, we can work through translations. There was a very good, um, a very good project that was done by Cassava, Cassava publishers in, uh, in, in Nigeria where they had writers like Binyavanga write romance stories mm -hmm. uh, that they then got translated into Kiswahili, Yoruba, and so on and so forth, that they then had people like me read uh, and also had them uh, on, online. So, so, so you, have, uh, you have the vocal, you have the English, then you have the translations. Now there's a question of shouldn't we have originally written in, shouldn't the translation be going the other way around from African languages into European right, languages, right. but but I, I do think there's I, I think there's there's some hope somewhere in there. Can, can, can I add this? Yes. Yes, you can have wealth, okay. But you even wealth like the Mabat mm -hmm. the Mabat prizes mm -hmm. come from a millionaire mm -hmm. in Kenya, correct? Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying, even mm -hmm. wealth does not prevent you from seeing that our power comes from the people, okay. So, it, it, be, be wealthy, yeah. you know, but know that that power yeah. comes mm -hmm. from the people. And it's, you can also put your resources mm -hmm. into developing yeah. a power-based you know, vision, mm -hmm. you know, for Kenya. Okay. Let me give one very quick example. You know, you know about the Logori College? Yes. The first institute mm -hmm. of higher education in, in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And East Africa. In it was not made by the colonial state. It, I'm telling you, it was made by ordinary Kenyans, mm -hmm. literally, you know, paying, and it was founded by, aha, uh -huh, <laughs> Bill <laughs> Koinange. Yes. And you know very well, when yes. Bill came back from America in 1998, mm -hmm. the first MA, he, his father wanted to build him a magnificent stone house. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. said, no. Give these stones to the Gori Teachers College to school. Yeah, to be, to be the foundation yes. of that college, Correct. okay? Yes. And for a long time he lived in a mud hut, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Now, the Gori, what happened when African independent schools were banned by the colonial state? The colonial state knew and understood the symbolic importance mm -hmm. of the Gori. And education. Yeah. So what did they do? Something done through self reliance. So what did they do? They destroyed. They, they turned uh, Gidogori into a prison where they hanged mm -hmm. Mau Mau patriots mm -hmm. because they wanted to completely rub that out of the memory yeah. of Kenyans. Unbelievable. And I don't really understand even why we don't turn Gidogori into a national heritage mm -hmm. because yeah, it's a model funny. of self-reliance. It's just what we can do, yeah. what we can do, yeah. you know, as uh, mm. I can't. Yeah. Two quick questions, Prof. Someone was asking, how did you come up with the titles for your book? Grain of Wheat, Devil on a Cross, River mm -hmm. Between. How did you come up with the titles? Real quick. I also want to know that, actually, because okay. yeah, his titles are amazing. Oh, <laughs> go on, go on. Well, they just, I don't know, it just happened to me. It just, you know, you, you write know? something, you know, like, for instance, Reboro Wai Joke. Yeah. I was writing, writing about this and about but of an environment and so on. Yeah. And then, wait a minute. But, you know, you listen carefully. Mm -hmm. uh, um, bees do sing, and bees do actually have a language. Mm. And you know that bees, without bees, there'll be no fertilization. So there'll be no crops, so there'll be no food. Be no so, the cent yeah, exactly. so centrality of bees in okay. our lives. Okay. okay, favorite book out of 40 plus, favorite. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know the favorite. <laughs> Go on. Uh, well, not. Oh. Actually, to be very frank, okay, go nobody go. can be real. I mean, they are like your children. Mm -hmm. But Morogwa Kagogo, which is this only one volume in a coil, there are many three mm -hmm. other volumes to compete with the English translation of Morogwa Kagogo, mm -hmm. Wizard of the Crow, is very important to me. It's all written in a, originally written in a coil, mm -hmm. and the English translation won the California gold medal uh, in 2006, which was first won by John Steinbach of Grapes of Wrath. Grapes of Wrath. Mm -hmm. Wizard of the Crow, written as Morogwa Kagogo in Ikoyo, translated, won that prize against competitions from English novelists 
in California at that time. Gracious uh -huh. me. So that's why when you were shortlisted for the Nobel and didn't win it, it didn't phase you, right? No, because the Nobel, let me tell you, my real Nobel is this. When I met Kenyans or Africans, Nigerians, or other South Africans, and tell me, this is how your book impacted me. Mm -hmm. I really honestly feel mm -hmm. that my Nobel. Mm -hmm. Of course, I appreciate all the good wishes of Kenyans and Africans mm -hmm. and peoples all over the world mm -hmm. who every year mm -hmm. send letters and do all sorts of things yeah. and say, That's your Nobel. Yeah. yeah, but that, the feeling yeah. behind that yeah. is very, very important. Okay. Come on, yeah. got literally mm -hmm. more, less than a minute to go. Look at that okay. camera over there. Yeah. Your closing thoughts for people listening to you right now. Well, um, what I was going to say is uh, to the question of my favorite book is that my favorite book is the one that I'm working on. It's always the one that I'm working on. For example, because there's something rewarding. If, okay, so the book I'm working on right now is about Tizita music, which is Ethiopian music. So I'm not Ethiopian, but I'm, I'm able to listen to that music and then translate that into words. So, so I, I, I'm sorry, my last closing thoughts are about my own work. <laughs> <laughs> That's good enough. Prof, yeah. you have the final, final word. You got 30 seconds. That camera. Power. That camera. Has power has always come from Kenyan people. If we want unity in Kenya, it must be the unity of Kenyan peoples. It must be the unity of that working person, that poor person, that little farmer, whether he comes from Mombasa, central Kenya, in Somali, northern Kenya, among the Somali, or whether he comes from you know, Kisumu or other places. That is really the unity that got us to where we are, and that's the unity that can actually rescue Kenya and make us become. You know, Kenya, if you want, Kenya can be what China is today. Can I read it yeah. quickly? Go on. Okay, support the Mabati, <laughs> support the Mabati Cornell Kiswahili Press for African Writing. Thank you. And to get in touch? Uh, to, to get in touch, it's Mukoma Goge, my full name, at cornell.edu, or just Google Mabati Cornell Kiswahili and uh, you'll, you'll find the information on this. And Michelle. Ever the activist, aren't you? Right. You're forever the activist. Where? On behalf of the only person, because I believe that power really honestly comes from the people. Okay. Yeah. Come on. Congratulations, my brother. Uh, Keep definitely. writing. Definitely. Keep writing. And you too, you too. Yeah. You can read my book? I'm, I'm gonna read it. I'm, I'm it's gonna, gonna take you, you like 30 minutes, you know, the way you people have written. Yeah. <laughs> Good to see you all. Well done. Well Thank done. you. Yeah. Don't forget June 11 at uh, University of Nairobi Public Lecture by Professor Gogi Wadiongo. June 30, book signing at Textbook Center, Sarit. Be there. What a family. What a generation of writers. What amazing people. And this is what we mean when we talk about the future of Kenya. Professor Gogi Wadiongo has kicked it off, or kicked it off half, more than half a century ago, and it's continued through his children and later on, venture. Who are we to complain? I tell you, this country is the most amazing place if we could just stop bickering and hating and just doing what we do best. Next week, new week, new show, new guests, same place, same time. Make sure you are tuned every Wednesday and Thursday, 10 p.m. to JKL, right here on Kenya's television network, KTN. Keep tweeting. At Kunanga Jeff, at Mukama Goge, hashtag celebrating a legend. Thanks so much for joining us. Good night. Good luck. Santa Santa Prof. Yeah, Santa Great Santa. job. Yeah. Prof. Yeah.